Okay, thank you for the nice introduction. Welcome also to this afternoon session. So we are close to the end of the conference. So I hope you are still uh, ready to get some new information. So EDI, Engineering Data Intelligence. So the name is program. We like to semantically link the data and provide AI-based decision models to support the engineers or caregivers, that's a use case which we want to introduce today as well to you, and to automate machines and also vehicles. And um, yeah, how we do this, so that is what we want to present here in our presentation. Uh, my name is Thomas Freundemann. I'm a co-founder and CEO of EDI. So my background is industrial engineer. So I studied 2001. I was beginning to study uh, industrial engineering in, uh, at the KIT in Karlsruhe. So we are located in the south part of Germany. And then I make my PhD in engineering. And we found our uh, CTO, Heinrich Blatt, during this time. And then we decided around seven years ago to found our company, EDI, and work. we are working in different fields typical industry 4.0 areas where we get some data from, but also from our background, we are working in the automotive industry for autonomous and electric driving, but also we have projects, for example, for the healthcare sector, and that is all what we want to introduce you. So maybe you also have some words from your side. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Heinrich Platt. I'm also co-founder and CTO of EDI GmbH. I um, was studying physics some time ago before I joined EDI and I programmed since uh, 14, <laughs> where I uh, yeah, now really enjoy also fulfilling CTO, being CTO at EDI. So Heinrich understand more on the conference uh, what you were talking than I, but I will explain also a little bit where EDI is coming from. So I make my PhD as an engineer, but also with the focus of uh, knowledge management systems. And that's also the, um, I will say, the DNA of EDI. So we are from coming from semantic web. And always an easy example in our social life, yeah, we are using a lot of, I will say, smart uh, algorithm uh, which supports us in the decision. I have really here really an easy example. If you are using Google Navigation, for example, to come to this uh, nice conference place, uh, you get the information about the traffic situation. If the hotel is already open uh, or still open, and you can go to the tapas bar, so all this information Google provides you, even you are not really asking for it. And if you look to the companies, there are uh, also we are working with small SMEs, but also we are working, for example, with Mercedes-Benz together. And they are using, I will say, really old school technology to store information, to reuse information. And uh, that was uh, before we found our company, we were working on a technology transfer project where was the buzzword was Google for measurement data because this was a company which generate a lot of test data from automotive. And uh, the test data are really expensive and nobody could find it anymore. And this is what we bring into our company. It's this kind of uh, similarity finding things so from the semantic web. One other thing, so we are located in Karlsruhe, that's the, a technical university, a technical research institute, the KIT, so for sure we have to talk about artificial intelligence. So, but I not want to go in detail what, what is the definition of artificial intelligence, but I want to explain uh, what is our understanding. So on the one hand, there are machine learning algorithms, and we are talking also here about open source, for sure, we are using uh, Python libraries uh, for the machine learning algorithm. So we are not developing new uh, networks, but what we are doing is we combine different machine learning algorithms that has not to be always the neural network. So we are also using cluster algorithm. We are using regression models and so on. It depends what kind of data we are uh, processing. And we are coming from the time series data, from the quality data, but also we have projects where we are uh, now make image recognition for autonomous driving, but also uh, for other cases, for example, to recognize uh, relevant information on technical drawings. And for sure, if you are using image recognition stuff, then you are going these neural networks because they are the, the, this kind of machine learning algorithm is the right one. But 
the most important thing, and also here we have a patented solution, is to formalize the export knowledge. Because the people which are standing, I will say, 30, 50 years in front of a machine, in front of a process, they really understand what happens and they already have some, uh, we call it key performance indicators in mind, uh, what is the right thing to do next if a process goes wrong. And what we are doing is we pre-calibrate our machine learning algorithm and we integrate in this machine learning algorithm the business logic so that we really can support the engineers in their domain with the decision or we can also automate at the end the process. And that's for us is the definition of uh, artificial intelligence application that it could be included a, a simple regression model which it's maybe not really the newest thing of, uh, of AI, but if you make the right decision for the engineer or you can automate a process or a machine, then it's the right tool to do it. And that's uh, exactly what we are doing here at um, EDI. And yeah, therefore we have a, a, complete, a complete toolbox. So we are using, as I mentioned, different uh, machine learning algorithm. Um, we also are using, for example, um, uh, cross correlations to understand uh, what kind of uh, relations are inside the data to support also the engineers uh, to understand the, the connections between parameters and so on. And one also important thing is what we are using. We are using uh, a streaming service, which is also open source. It's stream pipes and it's developed from our uh, research center for informatic in Karlsruhe, but we are joining this development since more than four years, also with different projects, and since around two years, also Streampipes is uh, um, launched in the Apache community, and so it's now a really open source pro project, and we are also somehow developer for this uh, open source um, uh, pro product here in the, in the community. So uh, that's really important for us because for sure, if you have data algorithm, you need data, and we have the possibility to transfer the data with the standard formats, but also with, for example, OPCUR, that's a, a semantical format which is used in the industry uh, to understand a little bit better what kind of performance uh, electric motor has already so that you can directly make some decision on it. And as well, as I mentioned, we have a patented solution uh, for our, um, yeah, uh, to model and calibrate our uh, algorithm with the export knowledge, and we call it cause and effect chain editor. And how this toolbox works now in, um, yeah, I will say on a technical perspective, uh, Heinrich will explain a little bit more to our s software stack. Exactly. So. Um, yeah, I mean, since we are all techno technicians, imagine these partial pieces as different parts inside of a Kubernetes cluster. Um, cloud native application. We use the approach cloud native, so use the um, matching technology where possible. So we have a lot of um, Ruby on Rails services in these ones, which exchange via primarily via HTTP. Um, also, where via we have a RabbitMQ backend where services can exchange. Also, logs are exchanged via this one. And yeah, we have their very specific services, and we have also open APIs. So basically, if you want to extend the service um, because you want to add your own application to it, you can easily just shoot another part. Um, if you follow the API, it will run like charm. And one thing which directly gives the cloud, it also brings with front end, which gives you an easy toolkit for really um, building uh, own things. Also, you don't need to take care for um, something like uh, authentication, authorization. Thing is, as a developer, you for sure want to focus on your business logic. You want to solve your problem. Actually, you don't, you don't really want to focus on authentication, session management, permissions, these sort of things. If you start from scratch with a Django, you directly have, have these problems on board. If you use kind of um, yeah, some, some framework already, then you're kind of rid of these pro uh, problems and you can really focus on what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, so may maybe we can also mention 
uh, also a reason why we are here today is uh, for some of our customers, we run exactly these uh, um, applications on NetWays, but also, uh, for example, we have a project where we are run on a Daimler hybrid cloud, also with this Kubernetes. So, so that's exactly also for us the technology which makes the difference. So if we talk in the industry to about cloud technology, cloud native approaches, uh, so a lot of people are, say, are always thinking only in the storage place, but I think this integration, the possibility to integrate and that also you can run in different environments, that's the, the major difference and also that helps us to get the data from different sources into our system. Exactly. The um, thing with uh, NetWays here, we had uh, recently, so they released possibility to also work with GPU, so especially we have one application where we identify, for example, technical drawings where GPUs are for sure highly efficient because they just make calculation uh, way faster than it would be without. Okay, so then now get ready for a short uh, online voting. So everybody is locked in, and so it's anonym, so no, you not have to be get uh, <laughs> afraid that uh, there are some sensitive data uh, you store inside here. Um, so we have the first que question, it's really easy. You can put in where you are from, so that we understand a little bit uh, from which region you are, uh, country and city. So as I mentioned, we are from Karlsruhe uh, here in Germany, south part close to the border to France. So really nice place, so uh, you can also visit us there. Okay, so it's really around the world, so here is Sydney, Australia, London, okay. Berlin, so that's also nice, yeah, I already uh, ha had the nice chat so with some locals here, so I really also like Berlin, but from Karlsruhe to Berlin it's also not such close, so it's around uh, 600 kilometers. So we are also not so, such often here, but it's a really nice uh, place. Okay. Yeah, so really international. So that's also what I really like at this conference. So um, that's also so makes, I will say, the difference if you talk to the people, you get this different perspective and so on. Okay. Uh, other question would be um, from what kind of industry or wh where you are from exactly. So for sure a lot of people are working uh, in the software department, but maybe you have with your company a specific focus on it uh, so that you, um, yeah, so that we also a little bit understand the industry. So automotive, I already mentioned as well um, that we are working here. That's our background where we are from uh, for the development of new automotive cars. Cloud services, so I think also that's some input for Heinrich. So, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we, we so when we started the technology transfer project, it was now uh, more or less 10 years ago. So we also, uh, well, I will say for this company where we work together, we were the first uh, software, which was a web application. So we really make this technology transfer project because now this company has a lot of web application software available. So that's also an uh, important thing from our side. Yeah, so music industry, I also had this chat already. So that's also really interesting what, what uh, was going on or what is going on there. And cybersecurity, for sure, it's also a big topic. Also our customers or the typical SMEs are really, I will say, also conservative and they are sometimes afraid if you talk about cloud technology that uh, the data are open. If you talk about open source, it's much more that the people get afraid. So to, to explain that also these kind of solutions are maybe more secure than if you store your data in the, in the cellar of the company. Uh, so that's not everywhere present in, in the mind. So, so also we have uh, other question. It's a little bit also to understand. Uh, so we ask here if you, I. So I will explain. So digital twin means. So we are. I, I mentioned we are in the industry 4.0. So digital twin. It's a really, a really. Yeah, I will say. Yeah, a hot topic there. So that means you have a physical product and you want to have a digital represent. 
qualitative in, in, the, in the database. And there are a lot also of different understanding in industry. So some are believing you need, for example, from a, a production line, a fully 3D simulation. For us, it's only to have the data representatives in our database. And also here, we can show how we are doing this. OK, here are also some are working really also to bring some physical objects into the digital world to, to get more understanding of this, um, yeah, of these um, objects, okay. Someone is missing. Okay, then one question more. I also mentioned, so we are developing AI algorithm, we need data. And for us also this kind of data streaming is really important. I already mentioned that we are using here, for example, stream pipes. So stream pipes for us has, has a lot of advantages. So because also you can put into the stream, for example, some smart algorithm, uh, especially for the people who are from the automotive industry, if you're now driving around and record files, yeah, then you have to make sure that you not store information which you not want to store in the database. Yeah, so you have to anonymize uh, the, the data. And that's exactly what we are doing, what you can do also with stream pipes uh, that you put into the stream uh, this kind of algorithm so that you store only maybe also high aggregated parameters in the database uh, which you can use further. Okay, here we can also see it's really 50-50, uh, more or less. Um, so that here also is a uh, yeah, uh, high focus on it. Uh, the last question for this round, it's a little bit also why we are here. So also we already had a talk, for example, from Spotify. It's a little bit uh, if you are going with a management solution or a managed solution. So what do you think is the advantage and disadvantage yeah, if you are doing this? Everybody get the questions? Nothing coming yet. Ah, ah. Now it takes a little Th bit there time. We are. It was the internet somehow. It was in the in the internet ether. Okay, cost. Yeah, I think it's always a trade-off. Also in the in the talk from Spotify, we we hear uh, uh, we heard that it's, uh, at the end it's a trade-off. Yeah, so you you have some independence, or but at on the other hand, you have to have a lot of employees uh, which are can doing this. So that's um, for sure also some uh, problems. Sleep at night. <laughs> so I think that's also a major point. And also we have here um, a really good um, yeah, use case. While I'm sleeping now really good because it's, uh, if I'm honest, so five years ago, this well-being barometer which we are running now on Caritas, I would be a little bit more nervous. Now we have a really good monitoring system. We know if the services are on. We also have netways which are uh, supporting us that everything is on because exactly this application is running on netways. So there, there are also a lot of aspects. So Heinrich, you take some other. <laughs> So th that's your. <laughs> it, it, it's very interesting that uh, people uh, uh, make someone else rich. So, because uh, it, it's kind of funny because actually, I mean, the, the, the w w if you deploy a software yourself, for sure you need to take into account the total cost of ownership. So it's not just you need to buy a server; it's your own cost, it's your maintenance, what all needs to kind of build. And then, if you if you really calculate total cost of ownership, it's kind of an interesting picture to really see, like, okay, what is, where's there really? Uh, benefit if it's really even or if it's at the end of the day then really more expensive or really cheaper than um, self-hosting stability support perfect yeah, so you, you can get uh, for sure from professionals so uh, also experience we made fun fact we used to host the kubernetes ourselves and also there I can tell it's kind of a hard kind of work and if they shoot some some update like for example kernels IP tables and 
you fail to uh, take this inside of account, then um, yeah, you just know it is huge and it is yeah, virtually impossible to really main it, maintain it in a small team. So, uh, uh, yeah, exactly these aspects with sup uh, support and experts, this is really also some very important, uh, interesting aspect. Okay, yeah, and I also I can really say some of the experience we also made, and this was also sometimes, uh, or also our reason why we changed, I think, two years ago uh, with the major application to NetRace. Okay, so thank you very much for your input and joining this uh, presentation, or uh, this uh, online voting. We will continue with the slides. As I mentioned, so engineering data intelligence, so our approach is really a data-driven business, uh, or data-driven business cases. Uh, what does it mean? And also here we make a learning. So in the beginning when we found our company seven years ago, yeah, we're from a technical university. I will say we are also uh, some tech nerds. Yeah, we, we get some customer and the customer asks us, yeah, we have data here. Uh, you could find out, for example, uh, predictive maintenance, also one of the biggest buzzwords in the industry 4.0 area. Uh, could you find out when the machine will go down? And for sure in the data, that's totally clear. Then we were starting analyzing the data. At the end, we realized that maybe this part uh, fails every eight years or 10 years. And uh, the, the guy in front of the machine already hear it one month before, so he can order uh, the, the spare part already. So there is no really business case behind. And that was our biggest learning, and we established it really, so I will say, three years after we found our company, also this kind of consulting in, in case of really understanding what kind of data the customer has available, what kind of system the customer has. Yeah, because for us it's also really important that we have this seamless um, job to be done of the customer that, that, that happens. So that means that we are really can also run integrated. And that's also why I say that our technology helps and also yeah, I will say the future helps us uh, that we really can integrate our data-driven solutions in a customer system as well. And that's really what we try out to find out what is really the need of the customer so that the customer has as an end, if we are doing the typical agile development process, yeah, we call it AD Scrum 2.0, that if we, at the end, we develop the software also with our AI-based algorithm inside, that we really um, have a benefit for the customer. And this is why also we put uh, here this uh, word, fast return on invest. It's not the case that we are really cheap. It's the case that we identify a first solution, which we really also have a benefit at the customer, so that he get the money back, so that he really get a return of invest. And in the beginning, if you are talking with customers, they have also a big wish list. And at the end, you have to identify the, 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 the yeah, I will say, the, the flower which makes the difference. And then, time by time, also we have this application lifecycle management. We can push uh, feature by feature new, new functions into the application or we generate new application. So for example, with uh, Mercedes-Benz AG, we were starting with one application. At the end, it was where eight application and with a lot of more functions than in the beginning. But you, you have to find a starting point. And also, I think uh, Heinrich can explain a little bit more later about this, uh, also this development process, what we have here, and also this build pipeline. Actually, the interesting thing is uh, to uh, follow up on, the, on some talks we had before. It's really think, thinking about the customer is, is also one important lesson we learned. Um, also, um, yeah, we, we heard already yesterday in the morning how important is it to really um, yeah, think of the customer, think really of the customer needs, think of your product as serving the customer. Um, I mean, as, as developers, as hardcore engineers, we often think of, okay, what is now the most cr fancy solution? What is the best thing we can do, best thing we can engineer? Um, at the end of the day, the customer needs to have it, the customer needs to value it, and the customer needs to use it. So exactly this combination between open source and really this, this market-oriented approach is something which also can, can yeah, benefit open source a lot. Exactly. Yeah, so, and also, 
And that's also a little bit my part yeah, in, in the organization where we are working in with my team um, on it that we really identify what is the customer needs. So we make these kind of workshops, um, but also what we are using, we have some standard modules on our EDI Hive IoT framework where we can analyze in an efficient way the data which the customer has because you also have to understand if for a specific business case, it's the information also in the data. And here we also have some standard modules to, to understand really fast uh, if we can work with this data. And also important thing, it's about documentation. Yeah, we have here our own wiki, but also we present this information, for example, also these nice storyboards where we explain in an emotional way what is the, in the moment the, 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 the pain points and how the, the solution at the end uh, could help also the persona which are involved. So that's really also what we are doing. So it's about job to be done. It's about persona definition. But with this emotional storyboard, it helps also to explain really good um, what is the need uh, for this, this process which we have in mind in the, in the, in the first step. Okay, then it's again uh, a slide for you. Exactly. So I, I will go here a bit in our technology stack, how exactly we use open source in our um, software process and what exactly are our development steps. You directly see here, it, it's quite a lot actually. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a copy. <laughs> okay. Um, it begins all, as I said, with the user requirements already. So we need to start with uh, exactly what the user wants to have. Then our microservices, uh, quite straightforward. And we have several layers also of ensuring that our code is good. We use uh, Python's pre-commit hooks, which are quite nice in really ensuring that the code fulfills a certain metrics. Um, Automail unit test kind of standard. Um, code metrics that we use, Sonar, uh, Sonar Cube Scanner. Um, then code reviews, so basically all the, the, the code is reviewed, kind of also standard. Automated integration tests, so this is kind of another automated testing layer where we really uh, shoot HTTP requests inside of our cloud and see like, okay, do the request go through because how often you have really that kind of some maybe API thing doesn't 100% work as you expected and then kind of things start to crash because there was a typo somewhere or something else. Um, another testing layer about automated front-end tests via Selenium who can really uh, yeah, emulate browser, you check for the different containers, if they're really there where you want them to be, um, documentation. We have also a manual testing step, which is for us also quite an important one, and I think something which is also, uh, yeah, really gives a lot of value because there we again have kind of the uh, customer view. I mean, for sure, you, you also want to automate as good as you can and automate as, as much as possible, basically, but at the end of the day, the question is for sure, okay, if you introduce some change, how does your user feel with it? it, it does it feel good? Is it slow? Is it fast? Is it whatever. Um, is maybe the button in the right place? Kind of these sort of questions. So that really we have uh, people engaging with the system and directly seeing it. Um, that's with, uh, uh, Argo CD for rollout, GitOps, and at the end of the day, we have the customer using it. And then we start the next cycle. So. Yeah, I will say also this circle makes me happy and I can sleep <laughs> because also here um, I, I will say since we have our company, we put a lot of effort in it and a lot of invest. And that's also maybe the case what Heinrich was saying. Uh, if you make a, a short proof of concept for a software application, a data-driven software application, that's one thing. But if you want to run it in an operational way, you have to go this way, that it gets sustainable, that it gets uh, robust, and that you also are, um, yeah, I will say, secure that everything runs and every service is on, uh, which are needed for the use case. Okay, so now I, I think you get a little bit understanding what we are doing and uh, in the next slide I will introduce a use case and then also Heinrich will explain a little bit more in detail how it works in a technical way. So the first use case which I bring here uh, with us is a battery monitoring system and I think that's a really also for a lot of you a really important thing. It's about emergency power supply with batteries for, for example for your um, a software rack, uh, a computer rack, so that uh, you, you always can run your services. Uh, and we are working here together with a company which exactly provides these uh, special batteries, uh, which are really easy to, to install and also easy to change if something is wrong with the batteries. 
And what is the, here our storyboard, what is the current situation? So you, you take this uh, emergency power supply battery in your uh, rack and then I think you put it there and you not really check every day if everything is fine. So if the current from the grid is not there, you are hoping that everything will work at the end. Yeah? So, but you are not really knowing. And then you are also not knowing, uh, should I change the battery? So there are, for bigger server farms, you have this kind of change intervals as well. Um, and maybe you, you are changing too early, then you waste money, but also it's about sustainable uh, delity of our planet. So also you are, yeah, you are not really sustainable in this way. And together with this company, uh, with this battery, uh, we provide now a, s a solution, or we developed a solution that we can monitor uh, uh, the batteries. And you remember, we were talking about digital twin. For sure, each of these battery stack here, it's for us a digital twin in our, in our digital world. And uh, you, you get the information, you get the alert. You also could uh, have this kind of service that you get a new package from Amazon with the new battery inside, yeah, then, and you can shift it automatically by yourself if there is the, the need for changing. And so yeah, you not only save money, you also get the confidence if something happens with the current from the grid that uh, your uh, emergency um, power supply will work, and also you can save the planet. So that's the storyboard, and that's also the emotional thing of this uh, use case. And um, Heinrich can now explain uh, how it works uh, in, on a technical wise. Exactly. So um, with this battery, we talk actually about these kind of digital twins, just the digital representation. So actually, it doesn't matter what exactly your device is that you want to monitor. Where you want to have a representation in your system can be some elderly person, can be some battery, can be some a power bicycle, cargo bicycle, can be anything which streams data, basically, where you want to operate with. And yeah, so basically, this is now more or less the same picture, but you see directly the, the connectors around. So our application has HTTP interfaces to the outside. And yeah, let me go uh, clockwise. So beside the U application, we have the data streaming part, which you basically see uh, here around. So the stream part is the solution um, from, from FZE in Karlsruhe, Forschungszentrum Informatik. Actually, the guys who work with the data, who put data streaming, yes, I can strongly recommend, check it out. It's a quite nice framework, which allows you to um, work with data, to stream with data. So you can really build pipelines inside where you have f data flowing in from basically any format or a lot of different formats. As such, we use it as a data abstraction layer. So we have an MQTT provider, and people can stream their data in more or less arbitrary formats. So we have, um, for example, this energy tube case. We have this uh, case with the elderly people, where we uh, also speak in a minute about. Uh, and there are JSON keys on the MQTT, totally different format. And, but we have a REST adapter to our system, which is for sure kind of well-defined. So you cannot put any JSON inside of this one. And so this logic, we directly source out to stream pipes. And inside of stream pipes, you can also harmonize data from different sources. You can, uh, regarding GDPR regulations, you can directly strip away private data. You can do a lot of cool stuff, actually. Um, as I said, it speaks a lot of protocols, so you can pu we put now the MQTT on. Um, it also can do something like HTTP collection, scraping, um, OPC UA is one adapter. It's, it's, it's plenty. It can also even get data out of a MySQL database and, and scrap there regularly. So it's, it's really a lot of possibilities. And if not, it's also quite easy to e um, extend. So StreamPipes also runs in Kubernetes. There's a nice Helm chart on their, on their page. And if your metric or basically your data source is not adapted, if you are missing an adapter or something, then you just shoot your own Kubernetes pod, which also kind of uh, program a bit of Java. And then uh, you're also fine with having your service that you actually want to have. It uses Kafka as data backends. Um, it's, yeah, it also has, its, I don't know, 10 containers or something, stream pipes, and then it works also like Charm. Going further, so there you see the rest of our open source stack that we use. So we use Isinga as a monitoring platform, um, regularly checking what's going on inside of our inside of our platform. All the services are alive, uh, everything is fine or not. MariaDB, regular um, rational database backend, uh, MongoDB for 
yeah, NoSQL if we have the longer, the, the, the bigger workloads, because, yeah, the thing with the PVC actually, we, we wanted to source it out, kind of. And using MongoDB was, was one way um, how to do it, just store all the larger data amounts in, in some other database. And the RabbitMQ for inter service uh, communication. If the system wants to communicate with the front end, we have also the HTTP for sure, but we're also using WebSockets. And yeah, I mean, if, if, if you have a distributed system like microservices and you want to point messages to, your, to the front end um, asynchronously, then WebSockets is here a good choice, but you don't have WebSocket connections internally. So how you do it? So RabbitMQ is also there our solution um, to provide asynchronously data to, to the client if you directly want to push some messages, whatever new data approaching, whatever. And also gray log collection, we also do via RabbitMQ. Um, yeah, we with a, with a nice gray log backend, basically. Cool, cool. Uh, exactly, so basically here, it's more or less a similar picture where you see kind of the integration with the examples. Um, yeah, here we have the battery use case, for example. All devices stream to MQTT, collected stream pipes instead of our cloud. And the nice thing is here really this uh, digital representations which are possible. Uh, no, where am I? Uh, here elderly purple, uh, people, let's say. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, the person wants to know basically, yeah, how, what's exactly the state of your device, whatever it might be. And yeah, you have then an easy adapt adaptive user front end, which really allows the user then to see uh, what's going on. And uh, um, yeah, I think we need to go to the well-being yeah. uh, example. Yeah, so at the end, so that, that's again a little bit the slide how it works. So that's the battery. So there could be a, look, uh, a rack where your server are in it. And we have this, for example, also QR code, which is on the battery. You get a direct link to the digital representative in, in our database, so you, you can also get some visualization, but also what we provide, it's not that we want to have the next dashboard, so we also have uh, for sure the, uh, also the lifetime or SOH, so when you have to change. So at the end, that's really the aim of EDI, not presenting uh, a nice curves where the, the people have to look all the days to it. At the end, we present really uh, a highly aggregated parameter, and that is exactly what we can show in the next use case. So now we are totally in a different world, so well-being parameter for seniors. So that's exactly what we want to do for uh, the supporting living area. So uh, we want to provide a smart solution where these elderly people can stay in their environment, in their homes, safe, yeah, and everybody has the confidence that everything is right, so the elderly people, but also the caregiver and the relatives. And uh, how that, that works, we also have again here the storyboard. You can imagine, so these supporting living houses, it's not the case that here really uh, three, three times a day a person is coming to, to make some services. It's really that people can stay one week uh, in, in, the, in the flat and maybe only one time in a week a person is looking to this, per to this senior. So the people can really live by themselves, but for sure they are in an age when something could happen. And if they are living alone behind this kind of door from the flats, nobody knows exactly if something happens. So there are, for example, some emergency button systems available uh, which the elderly people have to press but uh, sometimes he not is able to press it. He is also not really serious or he is worried what happens if I press it. So there is a lot of stressful situations in this kind of uh, organizations and buildings. And also the relative is maybe asking if everything is fine and then the caregivers not really was checking it. So there is a lot of, I will say, stressful situations available and our solution uh, it's uh, that we can monitor the, the, the seniors in, in, the, in the flat with uh, infrared uh, sensor, so we not take picture, no cameras, so it's about the privacy, and we give the information if something is happens, the caregiver can look to it, also the relative already get the information, so everybody get a good feeling, and this is how it looks, so we have a easy sensor which you can install in the floor of, of your flat and if you are working by through so you know this infrared sensor from the 
outdoor lights which suddenly switch on if you pass this uh, this place. Uh, so if you pass it in our case, we train our AI on, on the behavior. So we also have, we are running on Caritas. So we have a lady in the uh, uh, wheelchair. Um, she behaves for sure totally different than a person which can walk normally through the flat, but we train our algorithm and at the end we provide for the caregiver a dashboard yeah, where they get everything on one view if everything is uh, right or maybe there are some changes uh, ongoing and it would be good to look to this person at this day and for sure also the relative get a view to this single uh, person. So maybe the mother or, or father, uh, which are in this kind of organization. Yeah, so again here, I, I can say, so we are using again uh, the same technology. Yeah, so also Heinrich, you can say maybe some words to it. Exactly, maybe I would go uh, one okay. slide back. So basically, yeah, again, we have here the, the user experience. Like w when we began this project, Lady, uh, we, we started with it as a, as a research project and yeah, the lady was like, okay, I don't want to really open a browser, was statement, right? And you, I mean, as a developer, yeah, you just provide a web application, but then you hear such a statement, I don't even want to do a browser. Okay, what to do? So uh, yeah, we created a, we, we bought a screen, placed a Raspberry Pi behind uh, in, in, in kiosk mode, iframes, application, perfect. By this, the framework is directly ready. So actually, this uh, now I look the UI. This is basically the UI of our application. It kind of looks innocent, I would say. Kind of not not so not so can actually this this small UI cannot be so complicated somehow. One might think, but if you think about a deeper tech stack, and this is now exactly where I go to. Next slide. Uh, yeah, we have we have a lot of things going on, right? We have this automatically trained sensor, um, who really can who knows the regular behavior of uh, people. Because people are usually they, yeah, kind of predictable what they do. They have regular daily habits, which are learned by the sensor. And the sensor can directly identify, okay, if something is wrong, maybe a person has fallen, and then you want to directly know what's going on. And this is directly streamed uh, to the MQTT, um, yeah, and adjusted and streamlined via stream pipes, so HTTP inside of our cloud. There we have the IoT elements. So yeah, there we also have some no-code elements. Means like if you really want to say, okay, I have some new device, and let it be something very different, not even maybe as some elderly person, but anything else you can think of what streams data, um, then we also can create these kind of uh, applications without a lot of effort. We have then directly the um, applications, and then we add a bit of uh, view logic. This is then not so complicated anymore that you directly have your visual visualization, and you directly can provide what your user really wants to see, and you can really solve your user's problem. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that is what I mentioned. So we're not showing the the real uh, analyzing code or time time series signal of the sensor and our training uh, of the behavior of the persons. We just aggregate the information, this kind of smileys, so also for the communication to the caregiver. Uh, as uh, Heinrich already mentioned, uh, they were saying, yeah, uh, I need a screen. And this is how it looks in, at the Caritas. So this lady was exactly, which was saying, okay, I not want to use uh, other application. So I, I like this thing. So that's really nice what, what you made, but it should be really easy. And th that is why we have this plug and play monitoring system now. You can put in the plug and then it loads automatically. And that's really, our understanding also of user experience. Yeah? So it's not about the button. So we dis designing a lot of things and if the smiley looks nice or not. Yeah? That's one thing, but at the end, the persons have to use this kind of application in their daily work. And here we have to be really yeah, also sensitive um, uh, to, the, to the people and also, yeah, for sure. So if you work in the industry area, also we have a lot of people which are not really willing to work with a computer and this kind of application. So they want to work with uh, where they get also the education. So they want to work in the processes and with the machines. And so this kind of integration stuff for us, it's really important. Yeah, so that was also the last slide. Um, 
So thank you for your attention. So if you like our use cases, if you like our software stack, uh, you can contact us. Um, and um, yeah, we, can, we have many more use cases also on our website. You will find us in LinkedIn, on YouTube, or you will find uh, some nice uh, presentations uh, from other use cases which we not introduced today. And for sure, I will also say, so uh, we are hiring, yeah, so uh, if there is a developer which are also interested in doing things what uh, Heinrich was also introducing now, um, yeah, so we are also uh, looking for new employees. Um, so that's also a reason why we are here in this community, if there is someone which are searching for a new place to work. So please, you are also welcome.